y'all and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a video I had already filmed but I'm filming again because the YouTube gods hate me and my files got corrupted. So here we are and today we're going to be talking about products I regret buying for one reason or another. Now this type of video is going to be lesser on my channel simply because 2020 low buy products I regret buying involves the purchasing of said products to regret and since we're going to be purchasing a lot less there's going to be a lot less opportunity for this sort of thing so let's enjoy this while we have it obviously regret is subjective if i talk about a product that you all love that is great our expectations our needs skin type skin tone all things go into that so don't hate me but let's just go on in and talk about some products that moi me i regret buying first we're going to start off with a really simple one and this is one that i honestly didn't think i would ever say but the calf on d shade and light eye quads those little four pan something somethings that she did that she then like removed off the market because she wanted to reformulate them to make them vegan um i believe she pulled them off the market either just as i was getting into makeup just as i was getting into her or right before because i had to get off mine they didn't have them in store i had them heavily clearanced off at sephora and then the rest of them i found at marshall's so i didn't pay a huge amount of money for them but y'all they just i like i had them and i'd used them and was like okay all right whatever and now you know approaching you know kind of not purchasing from kat von d i was like you know i need to get some use out of these they got some nice colors in them so i took them to tennessee with me and it was all fine and good until i tried using them and they were just so powdery and patchy and you'd get them on your brush and it would seem like it was going to be really pigmented but then you'd put it on there and it would just kind of away into like the nether sphere like i have no idea like what happened and i'm thinking i'm like oh my goodness they're like you know they're very muddy and i'm thinking like oh my goodness when i did my makeup using these what did my makeup look like it's just something that i was like you know at one point i liked them and then maybe the formula went off. But you know, I had the Kat Von D Shade and Light original before it went vegan. And these weren't even anything near to that. They were just a powdery, awful, horrible, abysmal to work with mess. Then the next product I regret buying is sort of my own fault. Um, I have normal to dry skin leaning towards dry. And so when it comes to my foundation, a hydrating moisture giving dry forgiving foundation is kind of a must well i decided that i was gonna buy in on the hype and i bought the juvia's place i am magic foundation now i wasn't able to find my color even though i bought four of them got a huge shade range um if you can't find your shade what's the point but that aside y'all this foundation was like applying spackle like like we're not talking like a spackle like a spackle esque no the shiz you put on your walls to cover up the pock marks and the breaks and the whatever and the holes you made in by punching it because you're angry about a foundation not working for you straight from the home depot out of there spackle on your face it was not forgiving of dryness of fine lines of more than fine lines of any sort of texture it just all kind of clung and accentuated and it was also a foundation that said okay we're on here we're on here we're doing our thing we're gonna take out every every last little ounce of hydration you have in your face and we're gonna suck it out suck it right out and we are gonna make like virginia clay drying in the sun we are gonna be cracked we're gonna be peeling we're gonna be patchy we're gonna look a hot mess so in all honesty this isn't a foundation that i would like recommend to like i mean maybe 
if your skin, your face is like baby butt smooth and naturally hydrates itself regularly, sure, that's great. Maybe someone with oily skin, but it was just so unforgiving and so harsh and harrowed and gnarly. It just didn't do it for me. Next up is something that's kind of, I feel like it's a stupid reason why, but you know, I want to be real with y'all. You know, you just, just open up a dialogue. It's okay. We're all loving here. But the LA Girl Loose Highlighters. Now the formula, fantastic. They're a great, beautiful loose highlighter, hint of sparkle, just really nice. Definitely worth the less than 10 bucks. I'd recommend picking them up. And when I haul reviewed them, I was like, oh my goodness, look. The packaging is a compact that opens up like this. Which at the time amazed me because um, loose highlighters typically came in the unscrewed situation. So I was all kinds of, yes, this is amazing, revolutionary, it's amazing. Every loose highlighter should be in this whole clasp open top thing. But that was before when I was going through my highlighter drawer and I realized that highlighter um, was spilling out of the um, clasp opening mechanism. And I was getting highlighter all up in my storage, which may be stupid, maybe whatever. I am anal about how my makeup storage is. I like it being just so, and y'all know I love highlighter, but I love highlighter in controlled quantities. I like being able to decide when, which, and how much highlighter I wear, and I don't like sticking my hand in my highlighter drawer and then having highlighter on my hands for the rest of the day. So these were honestly just a little bit of a storage nightmare. I've since decluttered them. I'm like, that's someone else's headache. They can deal with it. And so the product was good, but it just, I mean, the, the, the fact that there was highlighter, you know, it didn't matter how you were storing them. Like if you took them and shook them like this, there'd be highlighter shifting all over out of the whatever. You know, there was nothing to completely contain it. Which now I kind of guess I understand why they do the screw tops, but you know, it, it, it was a nice idea at first. And something else I regret that uh, it's a brush, a makeup tool. Um, usually when it comes to the tools of my trade, I'm very simple, straightforward. I want it to do what I want it to do. And if it doesn't, it can just, you know, F off. But I purchased the Huda Beauty Fender Blender brush, which is a silicone-y thing on one end and then like a, I mean a 1990s, early 2000s sponge tip applicator on the end and I think this thing is 16 bucks. But it had great reviews! It's got going on five stars on Sephora so I was like, okay, I mean this must be some kind of life changing. And it just wasn't. It was like, it didn't improve my makeup application experience. It didn't make my shimmers pop. It wasn't like, you know, I, I could have gotten just as much precision with my fat finger going on up in there than I did with this brush. Not to mention that it was extremely cheap feeling, like one wrong look and that silicone end was going to just snap off the the sponge tip applicator, I mean, it's the same as the sponge tip applicator. I mean, I could go to Walmart and get 12,000 of them for 98 cents. So I'm going to be very much into returning that. That is a recent purchase and I'm just, um, no. It just, it just, I mean, for the money and for the fact that it's a hood on, it's a prestige and what, it just didn't, it didn't do, I mean, I use the brush that I use all the time doing this and that turned out fine, but with this it was just like, eh. Like, it's like it was adding more, it just didn't do it. The next item is something that only I can be blamed for it. I mean, I went in knowing what this was, but the ColourPop Disney Villains eyeshadow palette. The highlighters, I watched, um, oh, Angelica, I don't know her last name, I'm gonna butcher it. But she did a video, a couple of y'all recommended it to me about how to use the Super Shock, ColourPop Super Shock formula, so those are fine and good and dandy. But this eyeshadow palette, I mean, I anti-hauled it and then I was all like, well it's Disney and Villains and I need to buy it. And I mean, it's pretty. It's got like three mattes. There, there's a green shimmer in it and a purple shimmer in it that are absolutely gorgeous, but 
it's it's just not something that I reach for. I think it was like eighteen dollars. And I mean, the green shade is beautiful. That green shade is gorgeous. But it's it's currently in like my um potentially like it's not completely decluttered, but I'm thinking about decluttering it. I need to like go in and like look at it and like see if I can duplicate some of the colors, which I honestly probably can. But I mean, like it's just it's just, you know, it's got a lot of shimmers and a lot of them are like they're pretty, but they're like more neutrally, you know, traditional shimmers, you know, the green and purple are beautiful, but do I really need to keep this whole thing for a really pretty green and a really pretty purple that I can probably dupe out or have something super similar? in my collection. It's just something that I got because I was being all kinds of you know, I'm stupid. Quality's great and fine. It's just not something that I reach for at all, except for occasionally on that green thing. The next thing that I regret buying actually isn't one particular item. It's a subscription service, specifically FabFitFun. Now, I had gotten, one of y'all sent me a sample box and I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. This is kind of cute. And so I signed up for it and I did an unboxing. I had two, vid two, two boxes and you get it like seasonally. So I believe you get four in a year. So that's $200 at 50 bucks a pop. And you know, I mean, I feel like when it comes to this sort of thing, um, like to be honest, 80% of the stuff I got in both of those boxes I've since given away. Like the hair stuff I gave to my sister-in-law, um, bath stuff I gave to another friend, the foot thing I gave to my dad because his feet be nasty. It, you know, I just, I just, you know, you get it and in that moment you're like, oh, this is fun, this is happy, I'm so excited to be a member of the FabFitFun family. And I feel like this prescription service and honestly, pro prescription, subscription service and honestly a lot of them, what they're proking on is that dopamine and serotonin that you get when you're opening something up, when you get a package, when you open it up, when you're getting something new, you're excited. And I had fun unboxing it. You're like, oh boy, what's this? What are we going to get? Is it going to be amazing? But part of the problem I feel is that like dopamine, serotonin sure, sure, surge and the excitement of getting something new is kind of overshadowing the fact that I feel like most of the stuff in the box is stuff, you know, we don't need, we don't necessarily would have wanted, would have picked ourselves, or that we're going to use. I mean, I know there's that whole like, well, it's like 200 plus dollars worth of whatever with it all combined and great. That's great. But if you're not using the stuff, what's the point? I feel like it'd be better for you to just take that $50 and put it towards something you really like or take the whole price, $200, and get something you really like other than just waiting for that pleasure hit of this subscription box that I feel, you know, it's just gonna give you stuff that just buy what you actually want. You know, don't bank on the excitement of opening something, you know, who knows what it is or this whole whatever, you know, just get something you'd really want. And so that's definitely not something I'm gonna be doing moving forward, because like I said, it's fun and great to get a package and open it up, but the, the fact of the matter is that, you know, most of the stuff I'm not using. Something else I regret buying um, fairly greatly is the Tatcha. Dewy Louis Luminous Skin Mist. Now, this, I was like, I've reached a point and I'm like, okay, fine. I'm gonna invest in the expensive, expensive, pricey, pricey, bougie, bougie uh, skincare. And I bought the cream. The cream I like, I use that as my nighttime moisturizer. And the mist is nice, you know? But if we're comparing it against Tarte, um, Pixie, um, Mario Badescu, it's hideously overpriced. Like, if it had been the only facial spray I'd ever used, I'd been like, yes, this is life-changing. I have never experienced a level of hydration quite like this facial spray. But the fact that I had tried other ones, and there are other ones that I like, and there are other ones that do the exact same thing for less money, and you get more product, 
this was just kind of a wah, wah, wah moment. And I mean, I feel like when it comes to expensive skincare, you're expecting some life changing and skin changing results. I mean, but what you're paying for is like the experience, the pleasure, the luxury of spraying Tatcha on your face and a bougie purple glass bottle. Like if Tatcha cut down on their presentation costs, they could just cut down on their product costs on a whole. Cause I feel like 90% of that price point of 48 freaking dollars was in the glass bottle. Mr. Fantucking Fastic, maybe that's where they put all their money in. But the product inside, yeah, it's nice, but it's not any better than other things that are cheaper. Like why, what is your, why are people raving about, have they not tried? other things. So that one was just kind of a like, yeah, it's okay. I used it all up, but I'm not going to be buying it again. Another definitely not worth the money. Um, I got dry lips, uh, probably because I abuse them and wear too much lipstick. And a couple of y'all were like, girl, you need to try the Abite Agave Plus Nighttime Lip Therapy. $22. You got a big old nice tub of it and it didn't do diddly. Like I used it all up because I spent $22 on it, but I didn't find that it did anything better than my EOS or any other drugstore chapstick that I'd tried. Like, I would wake up and my lips weren't any better. I had to keep reapplying. It just wasn't something that I was like, yes, this is something that has changed and saved my lips. I'm gonna keep buying it, keep using it, it just, it just, no. It most definitely wasn't anything special. It was very, like, I put it on, I'm like, oh, it feels nicey nice, and then you have to keep reapplying, and then you wake up in the next day, and it's not any better. It was just, I, I know a lot of y'all love it, and it's a holy grail for a bunch of people, but for me, it just didn't work. The next one is a stupid, is a, I'm stupid, I bought it, I should have known. Um, for a while there, Kat Von D was, um, I feel like, just kind of releasing um, things into the atmosphere and hope something would stick. One of those things was a golden gel cream liner hybrid highlighter thing. Now at that time I bought it because it was a new Kat Von D thing and I was desperately, desperately hoping and trying and praying that she was going to make it come around. We've, we've faced reality, faced the music at this point now, but then we were still hoping, clinging on to those last little shards of please let her come back. And so I bought this thing and I don't know what the frig it is. Like what I've ended up using it as is like a very editorial highlight topper. I've put it on my lips, but it's like too gloopy to be an eyeliner. And it's just, it's just weird. I honestly probably should have included that in my collab with Lacey about the weirdest makeup in our collections, but that slipped my mind. But it's just this weird like gel eyeshadow. I mean, I haven't tried it as an eyeshadow. It's just, I got it. And at the time I was like, oh, I'm gonna do so much with this. I'm gonna be editorial and gorgeous and whatever. And of course, I'm not. And I don't know. It's like she was sending these hybrids out, these like things for people to test and then like decide whether she was gonna like make more of it. And I don't think that one passed. It's just this weird little funky pot of something, something that sits there in my special effects editorial makeup drawer just sitting there being like, I cost $20 and I'm completely useless. Something else Kat Von D, which I completely regret, which is also my own dingity dang fault. Y'all might remember uh, uh, Christmas 2016, 2017, when I decided it would be a bright idea, an investment to purchase the Kat Von D Lip Liner Vault. And at the time, I was like, this is totally something I need. I'm gonna overline my lips. I'm gonna do freckles. I'm gonna be so editorial and so fancy fancy. None of that has happened. 80% of the liners after I did that whole swatch video um, haven't been touched. And part of the problem is you go to use them and you go to line your lips and a big chunk falls off and eight dollars just falls down your sink drain. They aren't a really good formula. They aren't a very good um, 
the packaging, the um, componentry doesn't, it isn't conducive to an easy application. And y'all, this was expensive. This was not a cheap regret. This wasn't something that I think it was like 200, I mean, I got it for like a hundred something or something like that, but it's just like, ugh, why? Why are you so stupid, Soraya? Because obviously, I mean, it's just, it's just one big, they sit there in their cute little cup on with my makeup thing. And the only thing that they do, the only thing productive they do is their dust catchers. That is it. I mean, with that one, I totally admit fault. I was a complete moron. And the last thing I regret buying, um, obviously I got sucked into it because it um, is a highlighter. But when Urban Decay released their um, Elements palette, that whole like spacey spacey theme thing, they also released a space powder, which was a little mini, um, kind of in the same vein as their first highlighters that are basically those glittery effervescent whatevers. Now I've gotten behind the glittery effervescent whatevers, but this thing was like the epitome of a glittery effervescent fairy fart. I mean, it was dry. It was patchy. It didn't look cute. Like I feel like when it comes to glitter in highlighter. What we want is we want a highlighty sheen and we want the glitter suspended in the pigment. Like, does that seem too much to ask for? And this was just definitely not it. I mean, it wasn't horribly expensive, but any amount of money spent on, you know, something that ends up not working out, it might as well be a million dollars because that's money lost and money that you're just like, well, there's this thing. And I just, you know, I've since, I've decluttered it and I've given it to someone else, but it was so pretty and kind of goldy, champagne-y, ethereal. Like it looked like it was going to have a lot going for it, but... It, 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 the only thing it had going for it was like the really pretty outer packaging and it just, it was so sad because I'm just, when it comes to highlighter, I feel like I get especially, especially disappointed when they don't work because highlighter, as y'all know, are my baby. I love highlighter. Highlighter is life. But this one was just not a fun experience and was very, very disappointing. All right, all y'all, that is all that I have for you for today's round of regret. I hope you all enjoyed it. I would love to hear your thoughts on the products I talked about. If you love them, you hate them, how you use them, maybe I can love them. I don't know. Obviously, let me know something down below that you regret buying for one reason or another. There are a multitude of reasons that kind of factor into why we regret buying something. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep it real. Mm -hmm.